2019. Deputy Pat the Cope. Thank you, Just thanks for giving me the opportunity. And I'm also pleased that Minister Creed is here because a lot of this is very technical and it's only Minister Creed who uh, will fully understand uh, the issues. Uh, Minister, as you're well aware, there's serious concern uh, in the sector, whether it be the processors, uh, the producers, uh, the exporters, or any of those uh, involved uh, in the industry, many of those in ancillary uh, services. Uh, and what we're anxious to know. Uh, what uh, plans you and your department have in place uh, post uh, the 29th of March. I know it would be said that this is hypothetical, but the fact of the matter is we're just two months away and I'm quite sure that plans are in place, particularly after the votes in uh, Westminster last night. Uh, we don't want this situation. I know, Minister, you don't want this situation. We'd have much prepared, prepared if the uh, deal, which was an offer, was accepted, but we're, we're in the real world and we want now uh, to know what's exactly involved in the regulation of the Parliament and the Council with their amending uh, EU uh, 508 of 2014. Uh, I know that's the Maritime and uh, Fisheries Fund, but uh, I would be totally opposed, and I hope you are Minister, to um, transferring uh, any capital out of that to provide for emergency funding. There's not sufficient funds there, and any funds for emergency should be uh, additional uh, to that. Uh, and also, uh, we welcome uh, the regulation of the Parliament and the Council amending Regulation 2017 of uh, Stroke 2403, uh, making provisions, of course, for uh, vessels uh, fishing in the United Kingdom waters. But these are proposals, uh, and I'm wondering, uh, have you heard or have you had any discussions with your uh, EU counterparts or indeed your UK counterparts? Uh, what are the plans there? These are only proposals. The proposals are to be welcomed, but uh, there has to be, this has to be uh, reciprocal. Uh, in addition uh, to that, uh, the producers are uncertain what will happen after the 29th of March. I understand uh, that there is uh, maybe an emergency there to allow for continuity until the end of this year. And can the Minister confirm uh, that that was agreed at the Fisheries Council, which he attended in December, the tax and quotas, uh, allowing for that? But there is so much fear at the moment, and I know that shortly uh, you will be allocating 100 per cent of uh, the uh, mackerel quota to the vessels. Now, whether that is a good sign or not, normally it could be 80 per cent, 85. Uh, but my fear is, unless there's clarity, that you will find that this will be front-loaded. And it's not good management. It's much better if the catching sector can land o over a longer period and ensure greater prices. But the front-loading uh, is worrying, uh, and I think there has to be clarity, and hope the Minister can do that today. Uh, and what other plans he has in place in the event of a crash on the, 20, uh, on the 29th. Uh, Minister, perhaps you might explain, or maybe I haven't read it properly, we had the Brexit uh, Contingency Action Plan, which was uh, uh, launched on the 19th of December. But as far as I can see, there has been no reference in the uh, Brexit Contingency Plan uh, to fisheries. Uh, and that sends out the wrong signal, but I await uh, your response, Minister. And maybe there's uh, no wonder, I believe, that the entire industry and the entire sector, uh, they're getting edgy uh, about the state of readiness and preparation uh, of the government. Uh, also, uh, your views on emergency funding, rather than extracting from the EMMF uh, fund, uh, because that uh, certainly is required uh, for other measures, but to do this is only, I believe, a cosmetic exercise by the uh, European Commission. Thank you. Thank you. you. Mr. Creed. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Corley, Deputy Gallagher. Um, the government remains firmly of the view that the only way to ensure an orderly withdrawal is to ratify the withdrawal agreement as endorsed by the European Council and agreed with the British government. The European Council has made clear that it stands by the withdrawal agreement and that it is not for renegotiation. In light of ongoing uncertainty in the United Kingdom, however, we are continuing work to prepare for all possible outcomes, including the worst-case scenario of a disorderly Brexit. We have already introduced a range of measures to deal with the short-term impacts of Brexit through a €150 million Euro loan, low loan 
low-cost loan scheme and increased funding under the Rural Development and Seafood Development programmes in 2017, along with new £300 million Brexit loan scheme in 2018 for Irish businesses that are either currently impacted by Brexit or who will be in the future, at least 40% of which will be available to the seafood and agri-food sector. Budget 2019 contains a £78 million Brexit package for farmers, fishermen and food SMEs. Our enterprise agencies are continuing to work with seafood companies to help them to deal with Brexit through making them more competitive, competitive diversifying market exposure and upskilling teams. Specifically on fisheries, my priority has been and remains to maintain existing levels of access to waters and resources to provide continuity and certainty to our catching and processing sectors. However, in a worst-case scenario of a disorderly departure in March, 2019, those reciprocal arrangements could be endangered. I continue to have positive regular meetings with my European colleagues, especially those from the group of eight member states whose fishery sectors are potentially most impacted by the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the European Union. I am also working closely with key stakeholders in the Irish fishing industry and am pleased at the level of unity on these key issues. In recent days, the Commission has adopted two legislative proposals to help prepare for the potential significant impacts that a no-deal Brexit would have on Irish fisheries. The first proposal is to allow fishermen and operators from European Union member states to receive financial aid under the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund for the temporary cessation of fishing activities. The aim of this is to help offset some of the impact of a sudden closure of UK waters to EU fishing vessels in a no-deal scenario. The second proposal aims to ensure that the European Union is in a position to grant UK vessels access to European Union waters until the end of 2019 on the condition that European Union vessels are also granted reciprocal access to UK waters based on the agreement in the December Council on the fishing opportunities for 2019. The only clarity from the UK is that European Union vessels will no longer have automatic access to their zone. Whether this means a complete shutout of EU vessels or not remains uncertain at this stage. While I welcome these measures as a useful first steps, I believe that additional measures, including further financing over and above the EMFF, at EU level will be required. In that regard, I'm continuing to work with the Commission and other concerned member states to continue to develop European Union-wide measures to address the very serious potential problems that may arise it cannot be left to individual member states to ad address these problems in isolation. Ireland is particularly exposed with regard to the potential impacts for our fisheries sector. If there has to be temporary cessation, its use must be proportionate across all fleets. It cannot be the case that similar fleets are tied up in one member state and not in another. There must be a level playing field for all those impacted by loss of access to UK waters. It is not possible to eliminate all risk in a no-deal situation. Any Brexit will be negative, but a no-deal Brexit is the worst possible outcome and would not be in the interest of the UK, Ireland or indeed the European Union. That is why our focus remains on securing the deal that has been reached. Brexit will have negative consequences in all scenarios, but our key protection from whatever Brexit brings will be our status as a member of the European Union with all the stability and solidarity that that brings. Thank you, Minister Deputy Gallagher. Uh, good. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Ken Corla. Uh, my worst fears have been realised. Uh, a no deal. There's no certainty whatsoever. The European Union, uh, through the uh, the Council uh, and the Parliament, have agreed to give uh, UK vessels rights, but there's no guarantee that we will have reciprocal rights. Uh, and of course, if they don't give that, we won't. So it's vitally important that the minister works with the eight like-minded countries in order to ensure that it's an emergency fund. Uh, the EMFF uh, is of no significance. Uh, I think it's only a paper exercise and it's only a budget line. Uh, if the European Union are serious about this, then the eight who are working with the minister, uh, the seven others, they will require uh, the support of the entire uh, 20 27 uh, countries uh, to ensure that this funding uh, is provided. Just to give an indication of the seriousness of this, the 60% of our mackerel are caught in uh, UK waters. 40% of nephrops are caught in UK waters. So as a whole, 30% of our fish are caught 
in UK waters. So it's vitally important. Uh, and perhaps the minister might uh, advise when he is responding uh, why uh, there was no reference to uh, fish in the uh, Brexit con uh, contingency action plan of the 19th of December. Perhaps there's a reason, but if there's not a, a, a reason for it, then uh, I'm concerned that while the Minister uh, is taking a hands-on approach, uh, does he have the support of the entire Cabinet while it wasn't in included in that? Uh, I uh, would urge you to continue to work with the uh, Commission and other uh, member states uh, in relation to this. And I would also suggest to you, Minister, well, you say that you're working with uh, the, the sector. Uh, I believe that we immediately require uh, a forum uh, to bring together all of the interested parties uh, over the next number of weeks and give all of those an opportunity uh, to outline for you what the seriousness of the problems are and for you to let them know what exactly you're doing. Uh, uh, I haven't heard anyone talk, and I'm just going to uh, conclude now, about the... Uh, the link between uh, fish and uh, markets. We were told that they would be inextricably linked and there has to be advantages for the UK there. Are we exploiting that? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister, to conclude. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Deputy Gallagher, for the supplementaries. I want, I want to assure you, first of all, that, that we work extremely closely, hand in glove with the industry in all its manifestations from the catching sector to the processing sector and are acutely conscious of the range of impacts arising from Brexit, not least the displacement out of UK waters, and you've listed the primary stocks that are impacted. Uh, in value terms, that's 85 million euros um, in, in, in terms of the consequences of that are apparent uh, in many areas, not least in, in the processing sector, but also, and most critically, in the context of displacement and where those boats will, will, will consequently uh, endeavour to, to, to catch. And that's a real issue for us in terms of uh, our capacity uh, to deal with that in terms of Navy, SFPA, in terms of overfishing, uh, also in terms of the industry, in terms of access via the land bridge for markets on mainland European Union. Um, so there, we, we are acutely conscious, and our endeavour has always been, and I think we, we succeeded in terms of the negotiations and the withdrawal agreement to link any future trading relationship in the context of the political declaration uh, with uh, continued access uh, to UK waters. And I think that's really you know, where the kernel of this is. But unfortunately, I think what you're looking for, Deputy, and what I can't offer, is clarity at this stage as to all of the consequences in a disorderly Brexit. We are engaged across the European Commission, even as late as last Monday, I had bilaterals with, with Commissioner Hogan. Um, I, I have uh, and will be meeting with Commissioner Vella directly on these matters shortly. Uh, we've had ongoing engagement via the Group of Eight with uh, Michel Barnier and all of the asks of the Group of Eight member states reflected also in the Industry Alliance were delivered in the context of a withdrawal agreement. That's the preferred route in terms of the UK's departure. But the wisdom of Solomon wouldn't suffice to tell us at this stage what the UK's ultimate uh, course of action is going to be. Um, but we remain entirely focused on what is uh, possible in the context of our engagement with our EU partners um, in terms of all of the, the consequences. But we have to be brutally honest about it. Um, in terms of a hard Brexit, uh, UK crashing out, we then avoid the desirability of a transition period, uh, a negotiated future trading relationship, wherein it was our ambition to link trade with access to UK waters. So what the course of action the UK adopts if it were to crash out is unclear. Uh, they haven't issued any guarantees of future access to Thank their you, waters. Um, and in that context, it's imperative that we prepare for all scenarios, including um, you know, adequate financial resources and compensation from the European Commission. Thank you, Minister.